Well, hello everybody and welcome to another random video. And in today's video I want to show you something really nice and, well, I would say really unique. Uh, just recently I have been searching through my parents' old cassettes, hoping that I might find, find something interesting. And I did find something interesting. So, for example, I found this nicely looking Maxell cassette that I've never seen before. And yeah, it also feels very nice. It feels very, very smooth, almost kind of like rubber or silk or something like this. It's really nice. And I also found uh, this Maxell cassette. But this is not really what the video is all about. The video is about these cassettes that I found. Yeah, I found those cassettes with those really weird and odd looking covers. I mean, look at this. The quality uh, is really not that great. Um, I don't know where my parents got them from because I don't recall my parents listening to David Bowie or they also had uh, cassettes with covers of Grace Jones and stuff like that. So I don't really recall my parents listening to this kind of music and yeah, unfortunately the cassettes inside don't really uh, contain the music that is depicted right here on these covers. But I can show you, you know, this is a really old cassette from Eastern Germany. So according uh, to this, this cassette is from either 1977 or 1978. But it's a really old cassette and it also still has this very old vintage plastic smell to it. I can't really describe what it smells like, but yeah, it takes me right back. Um, and a cassette like this would cost a 27 uh, mark. Now, mark that would be... Um, a little more than Deutschmark, so um, Deutschmark is half of what Mark is and Euro is half of what Deutschmark is. So 27 Mark, well that would be something like almost 7 Euros, something like this. So yeah, looking at these covers I thought, okay, uh, they are definitely out of some kind of a magazine. And I thought maybe there was a music magazine back then or something like that. And somebody just cut out these pictures, maybe from an article or something like that. But that's not actually true. I mean, yes, those pictures are definitely out of a magazine. But they are not pictures from some kind of an article. Because if we look right here, we also have the artist's name right here on the spine. And it even says, focus, it even says cassette cover down here. So yeah, those were apparently uh, cassette covers printed inside of a magazine so that people could cut them out and use them for their home recorded cassettes. Now that's a really cool and interesting concept. And it shows you how much people used to love music back then that they would even provide something for people who record their music at home and it gets even more interesting because if we look at um, at the back of these covers we can see that we also have various different uh, dates so we have the real name we have the birthday, we also have like a little biography, we also have a list of some songs. On other covers we also have lists of uh, albums or releases. So that's a really cool and really nice little concept. But it gets even more interesting than that. Because um, you have to consider that these covers, they are from somewhere in the mid-80s from Eastern Germany. 
So at this time it was still the German Democratic Republic and this was some kind of socialism which unfortunately has been turned into a dictatorship. And in this dictatorship this kind of music or basically any kind of music from the Western civilization or from capitalistic countries was illegal. It was actually forbidden. So, uh, of course, you have to ask yourself the question, uh, why would they provide covers inside a magazine for music that was illegal back then? Kind of weird. And furthermore, you would have to ask yourself the question, where would the people even get the music from so that it makes sense to use those kinds of covers? Um, but apparently people found quite a lot of ways to get their hands on uh, this kind of music. And as an actual fact, these covers are actually one way to get this kind of music. Because um, if we take a closer look at the back of these covers again, we can see um, it says up here it says duet, then we have a date, and we also have a time. So um, after doing a little research I found out that uh, there was of course the uh, German Democratic uh, radio station and there was a show in this radio station. This show was called DT64 and later on this show would also get its own frequency and yeah it kind of became like his own tv uh, his own radio station of some sort and even though it was still owned by the german democratic radio um, they were still for some reason allowed to play this music even though it was officially forbidden I don't know why they were allowed to do this, maybe because they wanted to uh, get more people to listen to this radio station or whatever, but yeah, they were allowed to play that kind of music. And they also had this show, and this show was called Duet Music for the Recorder. And the cool thing was, not only that they were playing music, even though it was forbidden, I mean, they were also playing uh, music from Eastern Germany, but they would play this music without any interruption. And that's something that is, until this day, unheard of, that an official, uh, official radio station would play full-length songs without any interruption. They wouldn't even talk over the music, not even at the beginning or at the end of the songs, which is something that radio DJs usually aren't able to do because music labels want people to buy the music instead of recording it for free off the radio. So that was a really cool thing and a really cool concept back then. So uh, this date and the time would tell you when they would play music by this artist. So that's really nice and really cool. Um, but of course, it would be kind of stupid to uh, sit at home in front of the radio and wait for the music to come on and then they just play one song. You know, that wouldn't really make sense. So another really cool thing they did, which in my opinion still until this day was kind of unheard of, was the fact that they wouldn't just play one or two songs. No, they would play entire LPs. They would play entire albums without any interruption. And that's really, really cool and really crazy. And yeah, many people really love this radio show and this radio station, which is, I would say, very understandable. And yeah, the crazy thing the really crazy, you know, it, it is crazy when you think about it nowadays. They were allowed to play music from Western civilization or from capitalistic countries such as the UK and America and also uh, Western Germany, even though this kind of music was forbidden. 
But the only thing that they weren't allowed to do was to play music of an artist that used to live in Eastern Germany, but then decided to move to Western Germany. So as soon as an Eastern Germany musician moved to Western Germany, they weren't allowed to play his music anymore, <laughs> which is like really ridiculous. But yeah, that's always the way it is with dictatorships. They are dumb and ridiculous and stupid. Um, yeah, so then, of course, uh, the Berlin Wall came down and the radio show and the radio station still continued to exist until someone in, I believe, someone in September 1999, no, September 1990, uh, when all of a sudden this uh, radio station DT64 went off the air. And then something else happened, which was also still unheard of even until this day uh, there were thousands of fans thousands of people that went on strike they were going on hunger strikes and they were going out and they were blocking streets and i think this went on for something like 18 hours until it stopped and they i believe they succeeded and this radio station came back but I, I believe only for a brief period of time until uh, it finally went off the air for good. But, you know, this is so crazy that people would go on strike and thousands of people would block the streets only because a radio station would go off the air. I mean, this is just wow. So, yeah, even though these cassettes don't really contain any recordings of this radio show or this radio station, I'm still very glad that I found these cassettes and these covers because of the very cool and interesting history behind uh, these covers. So, I hope you also liked this little history, this little glimpse into a German music history or whatever you might call it. So um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next random video. Bye!